What's up guys Trekshan here back with another video. The title says it all. Yup, a multi-purpose PC build on a budget. That's what this video is all about. Be it your office work, studies or even a bit of casual gaming. This entry level build should be good to get you started. Sit back and enjoy. And as always, if you end up liking this video, make sure to smash the like button. That's all I request from you guys. I hope you'll do it. Alright. Let's get started with the components I've chosen for this build. For the processor, I've gone ahead with the Core i3 9th generation chip which has 4 cores and a clock speed of 3.6 GHz. The box has the chip, the cooler fan and a manual. I know many would say Sean why not AMD Ryzen but this build I wanted it to be Intel based so choose this. Do keep that in mind. Next up for the motherboard. I have picked up the Gigabyte H310MS2. Gigabyte boards are good and the model fits the budget and has what all I need. The box has the board, a SATA cable, motherboard backplate, a manual which is a must read and a driver come utility CD. Here is a closer look at the board. It has support for 8th and 9th generation Intel LGA1151 processors. You have two DDR4 RAM slots with max support of 32 GB, PC Express slot for your graphics card, two PC Express 2 slots for other components, four SATA ports, then on the connectors a PS2 keyboard and mouse slot, VGA slot, two USB 2 slots, two USB 3.1 slots and two more USB 2 slots and a Gigabit Realtek 8118 gaming LAN port. Then the audio connectors for your speaker and mic. It has high quality audio capacitors with noise guard for a good audio output. Apart from all this it has temperature sensors so you can monitor the temperature from a system software which is cool. Overall a good board. Next up would be the graphics card. Like I said, this is a budget build and I have to keep a balance. My pick would be the Nvidia GeForce GT710 from Gigabyte. This is an entry level 2GB DDR3 graphics card. The box has the graphic card, brackets, a driver CD and a manual. Here is the graphic card. This supports max 1920 into 1080 full HD resolution and has three outputs, DVI, HDMI and VGA. This should be more than enough if you do casual gaming. But always you have an option to go with higher models if you have the budget. For me this would do. Alright next up would be storage. Since I want the system to be a bit fast I have gone ahead with the entry level western digital green SATA SSD 120GB model. This will be the primary drive where I will be installing windows. So it boots faster and as you know SSDs normally give you performance boost. Here you go it's a 2.5 inch drive. It has a 440MB of read and about 430MB of write speed. For additional storage, I'll be popping in a normal 1TB mechanical drive and I would recommend the Seagate. Next up would be RAM. I have picked up a single stick of crucial 8GB DDR4 RAM. Speed would be 2400 MHz. And finally, oh wait, we need a cabinet and a power supply unit. For the power supply unit, I have picked up the basic Zebronix N450W. Though it sounds like 450 watts, well it's not actually 450 watts, but has an output of around 250 watts. This should be good enough for this build. Again, trying to keep it in line with the budget as much as possible. For the cabinet, I know you guys would want to see this. My pick is the one from Chiptronics. Model is X310B. It's an entry level RGB gaming cabinet which can take an ATX and mini ATX motherboard. And ta-da! Here is the cabinet. I should say it's a pretty cabinet. Sean, what was that? Nothing. Aye. It has acrylic side panel which is good to have at this range. Gives a stylish look. And in the future if you want to add some RGB lighting, it would be cool. The front has RGB breathing lights which I'll show you once we are done with the build. The cabinet is overall made of metal and is very light in weight. Side ventilation vents also has a 120mm fan. Top you have the front controls, the usual stuff, a USB 3 slot, two USB 2 slots, audio, a switch for changing the lighting modes, LED indicators for hard disk and power and finally the power switch, a solid good looking budget friendly RGB cabinet. Alright folks, time to get started with the build, shall we? 
Step 1. Fix the processor in the motherboard. Align it with the arrow. Lock it in place. Step 2. Apply some thermal paste. Make sure you get a good one from a brand like Cooler Master. The fan already has some, but it's always good to add some more. Step 3. Fix the cooler fan on top. Step 4. Get the cabinet ready. Step 5. In the cabinet, fix the motherboard backplate in the slot provided. Step 6. To keep the motherboard in place, you need to add the connectors provided with the cabinet screw packet. Tighten the connectors. Step 7. Then fix the motherboard and use the screws to tighten. Step 8. Now remove the hard disk bay and fix the SSD and the hard disk in the slot provided. Once done, connect the bay back in the cabinet. Step 9. It's time to fix the power supply unit. Make sure to take all the power cables to the back of the cabinet for neat cable management. Use the screws and fix it in place. Step 10. Fix the RAM card in its slot. Step 11. Now connect the graphics card to the PCI Express slot. Step 12. Now that we have all the components in place, it's time to connect the cables. I would suggest you to refer the manual and the markings on the board to make sure you do it right. First, connect the CPU fan. You will see the marking on the board itself. Then the main power cable goes here, big one here and the small one here. In the SATA slots, connect two SATA cables, one for SSD and one for the normal drive. All cables make sure they are routed from the back for neat cable management. Other end of the SATA cable to the SSD and the mechanical drive and connect the power cables to it from the PSU. Now it's time to connect the cabinet front area cables to the board. Make sure to do it right. USB 3 goes here. Then USB 2 goes here. Audio cable goes here. Fran switches goes here. Make sure to follow the marking on the board and connect them correctly. Next, connect the system fan. Now the only thing left is the front LED connection. However, since it uses SATA connector for power and we are left only with a normal power port, I had to get a cable like this to connect. Now it's time to do some cable management. Let's use some cable ties, organize it a bit. And finally, we are done with the build folks. Hey! The cool thing is you have tons of color modes that you can set, be it breathing lights, flashing, etc. You can even turn off the lights if needed. Pretty cool. The objective of this PC build is to build an entry level all purpose PC on a budget. But I want you to keep three things in mind. First, during this pandemic, the prices are haywire. Given the less stock availability and everyone switching to online classes etc, the demand is so high and it has led to overpricing everywhere. Second, these parts I bought from a local store and here is the pricing chart for your reference. However, online pricing might be totally different, could be less or more. So make sure to check with your local dealer first on the component pricing. But in case you can't, I will anyway leave links to them in the description so that you can buy them if you don't mind the extra bucks. But again, pricing might vary and that is not in my control guys so please understand and the third the build is not for high-end work or high-end gaming 
but kind of like an all purpose entry level build for those who have their needs not so super powerful but want to do a bit of everything and i know many would ask this yes you can do editing for youtube videos using this so if you have a budget of around rupees 25000 to build an all purpose budget pc then you can definitely consider this configuration that i have suggested from the many out there so that's it shan shan wait it's a cool build but it would be great if you can also suggest us a good budget monitor, keyboard, mouse and speakers that can go with this. Hmm? Alright. Here you go, meet the Zebron XPO Pixel, Zeb A16 HD, an HD LED monitor. Well, since we are on a tight budget, I would suggest this. Ta-da! Here it is. This is a 15.6 inch HD monitor with a resolution of 1366 into 768 which should suffice the basic needs. You can also go for full HD if needed based on your budget. Got this as it has both VGA and HDMI slot for connectivity. This costs around Rs 3500 and would suggest this if you are on a super tight budget. And here is a quick look at the technical specifications of the monitor. And coming to the keyboard and mouse. Again, I have some budget ones from Zebronix. The KM2100 keyboard and Zeb Comfort Plus mouse. It's a good budget keyboard and mouse combo that you can grab for around Rs 319 for the keyboard and Rs 185 for the mouse. It's comfortable to type and use. On the speakers, check out the Zebronix Igloo, a 2.0 multimedia speakers that has a total output of 5 watts and it's good. The design and build, yep, looks like an igloo. Powered by USB for around Rs 450, a good pair of ultra budget speakers that you can consider. The idea of this combo is to give you the best low budget options available keeping in mind value for money. You can always plug and play as per your budget and needs. Here is an overall look at the setup. Before we end this video, I know I said you can game on this right. Well, how about we try some games like GTA 5, Tomb Raider and PUBG. Yes! You will have no problem playing GTA 5 in medium settings, it's very smooth. Or Tomb Raider, yep, in medium settings, worked very well. PUBG again, medium settings, you can play with no issues. Do note, all these games are installed on normal drive and not on SSD. I don't want to get too deep into benchmarking etc as this PC is not targeted towards hardcore gamers. But you can of course post your queries if any in the comments and I'll try to answer them. So that's it for this PC build video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe for more awesome tech content. We'll catch you in another exciting video. Until then.